Hello, I have an update for you. As of today, May 31st, Venus has officially joined Mars in the constellation of Cancer. Hold on, this is from the point of view of true sidereal astrology, not mainstream or tropical. If you're new to this system and you would like to investigate more, please make sure to shoot me a DM or an email. But anyway, Venus has now entered into the constellation of Cancer, which is a really beautiful energy. Venus does feel comfortable in Cancer. There can be a little bit of issues. I do feel like some people may be struggling with Venus being in Cancer right now, but actually this is for a very specific reason. So Venus feels good in Cancer. She is there with Mars. Mars, mm, not so happy in Cancer. Mars is debilitated in Cancer. <laughs> so with Venus being there though, I do feel like there is a little bit of, it's a bit of a pick me up. Okay, Venus is his counterpart, right? So there is a little bit of a pick me up energy. Anybody that is ruled by Mars, my Aries, my Scorpios, sun and rising, maybe even moon. If you guys are feeling sluggish at all because of this Mars being in Cancer energy, this Mars is debilitated in Cancer. So if you're feeling sluggish about Mars being in Cancer, I do feel like with Venus now making her approach into the, the constellation, it is going Going to be a little bit of a pick-me-up. I'm, I'm hearing a sigh of relief. I'm also hearing a good sign, okay? Some of you may be starting to get really good signs in terms of your manifestations, um, the appearance of them. You're starting to feel as if they're coming through. Venus is coming in, bringing a very loving, nurturing, and fertile energy into the situation. So I'm hearing wherever your manifestations may seem to have or may feel like have been going wrong, I'm feeling some sort of miraculous change as if with Venus entering into Cancer for you, it's as if you taken some sort of miracle grow and I don't mean like you know the the miracle grow brand fertilizer but some sort of fertilizer that acts like a miracle growth to your uh, a miracle boost to whatever it is you're growing here we'll say if your manifestation we'll say if it's a, a plant right something happens with Venus entering into cancer for you in which it just injects some sort of life injects some sort of fertility you may be finding your creative expression is expanding at this time, especially my individuals who are ruled by Venus, those being Taurus and Libra. I'm definitely feeling that. I'm hearing an explosion of creative energy, and that's often what happens when Mars and Venus get together in the same constellation. When they become so close to each other and they're within the same constellation, that allows their energies to flow really well, and the combination of Mars and Venus, that being the combination also of masculine and feminine, is a creative force, is the creative force of our our star system, of our universe, of our experience here as humans on the earth, right? So when these energies get together, great creative explosion. Now, th with this being in the constellation of Cancer, I mean, like, if you're not trying to get pregnant, honey, you might want to be careful, <laughs> okay? You might want to be careful. Now, there is something specific surrounding pregnancy for somebody's, for some people out there, and that is coming from the opposition between Venus and Pluto, which you can see here. Now, here we have the chart in front of us, obviously. Yes, May 31st, that is today. Um, uh, here we have Venus at zero degrees of Cancer, right? We're also next to Mars. Mars is about a little over halfway through Cancer right now. But you see, you see this red line here in the center going from Venus. This is her green speck, her green slash right here. This red line, this is an opposition, and that's with Pluto. Now, don't mind the fact that Pluto is retrograde right now. Again, this is one another one of our regularly scheduled retrogrades when it comes to the outer planet, of which Pluto is one. Now, the thing here is the opposition between Pluto and Venus. And with Pluto being at the very last stages of Sagittarius, is coming some sort of energy of spiritual expansion, also some sort of heightened sense of awareness, because you have to remember, Sagittarius Sagittarius is a very enlightened energy. Sagittarius is ruler of the ninth house. This is the house of spiritual expansion, the house of travel, extreme travel, going on extreme trips, visiting brand new, really foreign, out there to the extremes, you know, places. Of course, everything is a spectrum, so keep that in mind. But that is Sagittarius. Sagittarius is that expansive energy. Sagittarius is also a very spiritually expansive energy, okay? Remember, Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, right? So with Pluto, 
Pluto being in the very last degrees of Sagittarius, albeit moving retrograde at this time, but that doesn't matter. There is a level of spiritual awareness, spiritual understanding, spiritual expansion that I feel like is being triggered at this time when it comes to Venus. Now, the other thing I'm feeling about this is Pluto is ruler of Scorpio. Scorpio rules the eighth house. I feel something very specific that is coming through when it comes to pregnancy. There's a feeling here of a group of people within the collective going through a deep transformation, a deep change when it comes to, first and foremost, I'm hearing being able to get pregnant. Somebody here may be really changing the way that they see childbirth, the way uh, a natural childbirth even. I'm getting an energy of someone being willing to discover new ways of building fertility rather than maybe just something conventional, going from conventional, maybe Western medicine type of energy to something very unconventional, maybe like an Eastern style or an Ayurvedic style or a very natural style of medicine healing. And this feels very much involved with pregnancy for somebody. I feel like someone is about to or has reached the end of their rope. Somebody has been holding on to some sort of traditional Western medicine type of energy in order to get their fertility going, in order them for to be able to have a child. Whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't really matter. Both men and women can have fertility issues. I am feeling this is on a woman's side, specifically a biological female. You could be a man or a woman, but I am specifically feeling like for somebody here, this is a biological female. Un covering the sources of why you may be infertile as well. With this Plutonian energy, this I'm feeling picking up on strong eighth house, strong Scorpio type of situations. I feel like the creative potential between Mars and Venus being in the sign of Cancer, Cancer ruling the fourth house, the fourth house being the home and family could even relate to your mother. There is great creative potential here first and foremost, but then also with this Cancerian fourth house influence, this could very well be Pluto expanding your your mind or your, your experience to the point where now you're starting to uncover the reasons why you may be having these infertility issues. Whether it's deeply uncovering something for yourself, within yourself, or doing uh, digging out in the external world to find some sort of treatment or find some sort of new way of doing things. That's what I feel this opposition here between Venus and Pluto is creating for somebody or some people in the collective. Now, keep in mind that I wanna focus this specific message for the month of June, okay? Because first of all, I don't wanna get too ahead of ourselves. Let's keep this focused here. Also, that's really when this opposition is going to be happening by June 17th. This opposition between Venus and Pluto will have ended, okay? So for this month of June, this fertility issue, this uncovering, I'm hearing deeply uncovering the source of the madness um, could really be a potential for you. If, if there is something that you consciously know that you want to uncover, that you've been trying to uncover, and you're feeling intrigued in this moment to really consciously take advantage of these energies to help uncover this or discover this for you, I highly encourage you to do that <laughs> okay so let's pull some cards um, I'm feeling guided to do this here and uh, getting started already I just picked this deck up and we do have the six of wands at the bottom of the deck I have not shuffled it or anything yet um, victory is coming okay I really feel like there are the good the chances are good there are some really good chances that you'll be able to make some deep discoveries here if you really Take advantage of this energy and really you guys the only thing you have to do is be consciously willing to accept it into your life and allow it to make the changes that are necessary in terms of where it is you're trying to go okay see when it comes to manifesting with the universe all you really have to do is hold the intention of what it is you want to achieve and what it is you want it to be built maybe even however it is you want it to be built and just allow the universal energies to do that for you allow the intelligence the deep immense, expansive, infinite intelligence of the universe that created everything it is that you see around you, including you yourself, right? Allow that universal energy to work for you. All you have to do is sit back and allow it to happen. This is the feminine principle, okay? I recently heard somebody describe it as a, a woman. Yes, thank you, sis. Uh, describe it as people are trying to connect with the feminine in very physical ways. And that's not bad, okay? Obviously, that is a way to connect with the feminine because we are in a physical reality, right? But if you really want to get deeply, like really truly connected to the energy of the feminine, all you have to do is embody the energy of receptivity. All you have to do is sit back and allow it to 
to come to you. Now you do have action to take and that action is to set the intention and maintain the alignment, right? But when it comes to the manifestation coming to you, all you gotta do is sit back and allow it to happen. That is how you really truly embody the feminine, right? And it's perfect that that's coming through right now because we're talking about Venus. Maybe for some of you here, the message is to set the intention and then allow it to come to you. Sit back and allow the opportunities, the knowledge, the experiences to enter into your life. Allow the infinite intelligence of the universe to come in and start working the magic to make the manifestation happen for you okay for somebody here that's how you're gonna get your wish the star is at the bottom of the deck now cute okay and that wish is absolutely a baby a child whether it's through adoption maybe some of you are trying to maybe some of you are considering adoption at this point um, and maybe it's a really controversial topic. I feel like if it is a controversial topic, it's because of your family. It's because of the dynamic of your family. You may actually be seriously considering uh, bringing a child of a different race into your family. And maybe your family has some deeply rooted racial issues. I am hearing it's a wise choice though. There is some sort of, the, the universe is orchestrating this. For somebody here, this is your confirmation. This is, the message for you is, especially if it just seems like the universe is absolutely pushing this child into your life or this circumstance, this type of circumstance into your life, it's for a very real reason. It's because whatever is being pushed into is meant to come in and create some sort of deep and profound change, all right? So again, allow the universal energies to work for you, okay? We're working with you, not against you, right? Two more shuffles there, last one. Okay, this deep and profound change with Venus entering into Cancer. Now also keep in mind guys, Venus is going to be in the constellation of Cancer until June 22nd, okay? So keep that in mind. Let's go. Venus in Cancer. What messages do we have for Venus in Cancer, please, Spirit? For the Collective, yes? First card is the Moon, ruler of Cancer, yes? Illusions. Deeply hidden aspects is what I'm hearing. Um, this, this is definitely what you could be uncovering uh, with this opposition with Pluto right now, okay? I'm, I'm really feeling, with the Moon here, I'm feeling uh, deep, dark secrets. These may be some deep, dark secrets that you have chosen not to look at for years. Okay, I'll say decades even for some of you. It does, I am hearing, it's some, for some of you, it feels like centuries. So this could be something going way back in, or this is something way out in some sort of parallel lifetime for you. We also call them past lifetimes, but it's not really the past. They're, it, it, they're really, in reality, in, in the real, real reality, there is no time. In, time there is no time, okay? Uh, there is no past, present, or future. It's all happening all at once right now okay so when i say past lives really i'm referring to a parallel lifetime okay that is going on at this moment and yet your soul in it in all of its multi-dimensionality your soul is experiencing all of these at things at once but we in these physical incarnations experience it in through through the lens of linear time okay so that's why also we call it past lives <laughs> okay, but this could be something from a past lifetime or a parallel lifetime, all right, that you are uncovering. That's why I'm hearing it could be centuries, <laughs> centuries that you have not faced this, all right? Uh, moon and Venus, I'm sorry, Venus in Cancer for the collective. Venus in Cancer, please, Spirit. Okay, we do have the Six of Swords reversed now. Venus in Cancer, one more card, please. Okay, and then we have, yeah, see, we have the Four of Cups. Yeah, this is absolutely something you have absolutely been avoiding this. You have the devil at the bottom of the deck here, okay? The devil does feel like family situations. I am feeling family ties, you know, situations that you feel like you have been forced to be uh, attached to, associated with. This very much could be coming from... Um, a deep sense of uh, inner child work that needs to be done in terms of how you may have been abused as a child. Again, I'm getting, I'm picking up on fourth house energies here, strongly fourth house energies because of this Cancerian energy, right? Um, 
with Venus being in Cancer. Uh, so some of you, yes, have absolutely been abused as a child, and uh, yes, that absolutely means for some of you sexual abuse. Um, and that absolutely could be how, why the devil is showing up here, because I'm feeling like for some of you, you are seeing this as this is something that you has been put onto you. This is an Im this is an imprisonment that has been shoved onto you, placed onto your life, and you didn't ask for it. I completely understand that. Um, uh, uh, what I'm really seeing here, I'm not gonna go into how we could also look at that, but what I'm really seeing here is the cage, the way that you feel like you have been chained in your life, whether it's to this situation specifically, or whether it's through this situation heavily affecting other outside ex experiences. I, I, it depends on your perspective here. It depends on your focus. Take it as it resonates, okay? Um, but here's the thing though, you guys. I think what I feel like is happening here for you is you are starting to realize how you can, you may be able to unchain yourself, okay? Under the devil, you do have the seven of pentacles and then you do have the knight of cups to the eight of cups to the 10 of cups. Look at that, you guys. So what is happening here is with the devil and the seven of pentacles as the under overall energy here, you have, I, have, I see you in this energy of basically saying to yourself is my involvement with this, I'm also hearing, is my attachment to this really serving me at this point? Some of you are starting to be aware of how you are holding yourself back by remaining attached, keeping yourself chained to this situation. The other thing about the devil is even though these two individuals are chained here, typically, well, you can see it here, these chains, even though they're around these people's necks, they're still loose enough for them to literally just lift them off of them. And it's not like you, um, their hands are behind their back, sure, but are they tied? We can't see. We don't know. Maybe they're just holding there. Maybe they're just holding them there out of submission. Maybe maybe it's just that the devil has convinced them so much that they are chained to this that they are willingly holding themselves back. They're not as chained as they really truly think they are. If they were to just wake up a little bit, they could see. They could take their hands from behind their back, lift that chain off their head, and walk the fuck away. And that's what you're starting to realize here. Wait, hold on a second. They may have done this to me, sure, but do I need to be affected by this anymore? Five, five, five on the counter as I'm saying that. And that's where the Knight of Cups comes in. Because now you're giving compassion to yourself or, uh, in order to break these chains and walk away, Eight of Cups. And not only walk away, walk directly towards your Ten of Cups. I'm hearing the marriage. I'm also hearing the pregnancy. Some of you are wanting to get pregnant and have a child, yes, but others, uh, but, but you're wanting to get married first. Perfect, great. I'm hearing, let the universe attune that for you. You do have the Queen of Cups here with temperance. Now that just showed up. This is all about dealing with your emotions. Also understand the Queen of Cups does represent officially cancer ruled by the moon. Here's all, the, all this Cancer energy. This time period of Venus in Cancer from June 1st to June 22nd is really going to be an excellent time for you guys to really work on your emotions, okay? If you need to, if you are wanting to be a mother, if, if you are wanting to bear a child, this is a really beautiful time, a perfect time for you to work on these energies. And I'm pick, picking up on specifically, guys, this is a really unique opportunity that you are going to want to take and need to, you're going to need to take advantage of, I'm hearing for some of you, because of the fact that Mars and Venus are in the same constellation. So their energies are very closely connected to each other and are interacting with each other at this time in greater ways than they are outside of when they're not in the same constellation, right? So specifically for some of you, this healing that you need to do is about, or at least involves, reconciling with the masculine or reconciling with masculinity or masculine energy somehow. And with Mars being in the constellation of Venus and, and, and diluted, right? So I don't mean this in a toxic way, but Mars can't fight back as much as he normally would. He can't put up as much of a fight. He's diluted right now with him being in cancer. So maybe that'll make him more agreeable where he wasn't in the past. 
and maybe with Venus being here in Cancer, Cancer being a very loving energy, maybe the feminine will be a little more agreeable as well. Maybe with them being in the same constellation like this and really coming very close to approaching each other before Venus then retreats <laughs> and goes retrograde. But maybe they'll be able to start to see eye to eye a little bit more. I mean, I don't know, it's just a hunch. <laughs> anyway. This is going to be a really excellent time for you to get your emotions in check, for you to balance out some of these energies here, for you to start to deal with the fact that you have been holding yourself back from moving on from this situation and effectively allowing healing, okay? I wanna get one last pull, closing message here, Venus and Cancer for the collective, please spirit, Venus and Cancer, closing message here. Okay, you have the Two of Wands, it is reversed. Um, the first thing that I'm feeling for that is it's really not even a choice. Uh, or maybe you've already made a decision. What I'm getting here is that you're not, it, you don't have to choose. The choice is already made for you, is what I just heard for some of you. Uh, but I feel like that's on a universal energy. I, I get this feeling here of not needing to choose. I am hearing the choice has been made for you or the choice is being made for you. This may be where you are having to align with it, get back into um, your alignment, get into that feminine energy, sit back. You see how, I, you see how I'm sitting back like now? Like, like I, whereas before I was like all up in your face, right? Well, no, right now I feel like I just, I wanna sit back for a second. I don't need to choose. I don't need to, I don't need to go after anything. Again, I, I, don't, I don't feel like this is toxic. I feel like the universe is saying the choice is being made for you. All you have to do is keep your alignment. Closing message, anything else? Page of Cups, there's the child. You don't need to choose. It's being made for you. This child wants to come into this experience as well. Whether this, is a, whether this is a physical child that you are adopting or working on adopting, or this is you having, bearing a child, this child also wants to come into this lifetime. You don't have to worry about that. I'm, I'm hearing needless to say, the energy speaks for itself. And that's being said because you know this, because the other part of this message is for whomever this is for, you feel it. I mean, it's almost as if it's consuming your life. There are some, <laughs> there may be some moments with this, even though you love it, even though you are so thrilled and so excited and absolutely want to be a part of this child's life and a part of this child's journey, there are some moments where it feels like it's absolutely consuming your life. And you're like, who am I? It's like this being is taking over your experience, especially if this is someone that is getting ready to bear a physical child. It's like this child's consciousness, this child's energy is like taking over your life in some cases and handling things, making sure some, th this child may be born as a Capricorn. <laughs> because the way that I feel like this child has its fingers in every little detail of how its life is being constructed right now. I mean, <laughs> I don't know who this message is for, but man, let me tell you, this child is tenacious, okay? Like, homeboy, homegirl ain't fucking around. <laughs> I love it. Closing message for the collective, Venus in Cancer. Eight of Wands, Seven of Wands, um, things are going to move very quickly, very swiftly. You just have to focus on defending yourself. You just have to focus on those boundaries, yes? Because we do have the Queen of Cups here, all right? The, one of the main lessons of the Queen of Cups is focusing on holding, handling boundaries, emotional boundaries, okay, especially. You do have these Eight of Wands to the Seven of Wands here, so make sure you're focused on your boundaries. Things are gonna be moving very quickly, okay? You may feel like things are moving at an uncontrollable speed. Don't worry about the speed, okay? Don't worry about how fast thing, things are moving. Don't worry about how slow things may be moving. Don't worry about that. Just let the momentum take you. All you have to do is hold up your boundaries, okay? Make sure that you are safe and protected. Make sure that your womb is protected, okay? Final card you do have here is the Hierophant. Uh, the message that I'm getting from this is this is spiritually ordained. Really the only thing that I feel from the Hierophant for you right now is protection from spirit. 
okay? You do have the Wheel of Fortune at the bottom of the deck. Things are changing fast, okay? The Wheel of Fortune is in fact turning at your fa at, in your favor. Knight of Pentacles is underneath that. Slow and steady progress, um, but it also may feel like this energy or this time period is a little chaotic. Uh, you just have to focus on your boundaries, staying grounded, and taking things one step at a time. 33, 33 and on the counter. That's the big message here, okay? It's not necessarily um, slow movement because I do feel like that for some, uh, there, there is a swirl, a swirl of energy here going on. It may really feel quite chaotic. Don't worry about that. The universe is aligning things. The message from the Knight of Pentacles is take this one step at a time one day at a time. If you want to take it one hour, one fucking second at a time, bitch, go ahead and do it. <laughs> okay. But I'm very excited for you here. This is your really beautiful energy. Um, and I really hope this works out for you in the best way possible. Okay. I'm really praying for that. I'm really encouraging that for you. For those of you that are feeling a lack of confidence, baby, please, please, if you want this, you are worthy of it. You are, and you, you have to be willing to have it. You have to be willing to allow yourself to have it. And if you really want it that bad, and it's not manifesting, or you have been manifesting this, okay, this is a specific message. For some of somebody out here, you've been trying to manifest this for a long time, and it's just not working out. What I wanna say to you is, maybe it's not working out the way it should be, and that's why it's failing. Maybe you need to open your mind, expand your point of view, expand your vision. I'm seeing the hanged man now. Maybe you're needing to change the way you are trying to manifest this. Maybe you should change the way you need to, not should, excuse me. Uh, maybe it would help you to change your focus, change your perspective on this. Maybe you could be going about this a different way. Maybe this is a, 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 maybe this is a, a message for someone who has been trying to give birth naturally and it, maybe that's just not in the cards for you. Maybe that's just not written in the stars for you. I, it it kind of pains me to bring that. I feel somebody's heartbreaking as I'm saying this. I'm not trying to break your heart, uh, but the message is real. Um, and maybe that's what you're needing to, uh, to understand. Um, I am seeing a tower. I'm seeing the tower now. The, someone's about to go through a tower moment, but that doesn't mean that you can't have a child. Having a child is still possible, all right? Um, and I don't want to speak for anyone. Obviously, I'm not a woman. I do not intend to speak for a woman, okay? Um, but there is a message here for someone that is you need to change your focus. Maybe adoption is a better option for you and for your family, for this lineage. Mm. The Hierophant. Breaking generational curses here. Yes, honey. Yes, 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 indeed. All right, well, I'm gonna leave that there. I love you all so very much. I hope this was helpful for you. Happy Venus in Cancer. And I look forward to connecting with you again soon, yes? Love you. Bye. <laughs>